Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. This is a show where we take one topic and we break it up into a bunch of different episodes every week so that we can all understand it a little bit better. If that sounds like something you're interested in, subscribe if you haven't already. Today and this week we talked about the internet and this is our last episode in this series. We've talked a lot about the internet and about its intricacies and how it's used and security and even how it was invented and how it's changing our world. But what about hackers? You can't talk about the internet and not talk about hackers. How have hackers influenced the internet? Have they made it better or worse? Hackers and hacking culture is pretty much woven into the fabric of the internet. The first people to use the internet were making it up as they went. I mean, they were essentially hackers, right? They were creating all sorts of new ways of using these computers that were all networked together. Anyone who ever thought of exploiting someone or taking advantage of anything on the internet, trying to figure out how this computer works and using it in a different way than it might have been designed, they could be considered a hacker. However, today when you think of hackers, you think of trying to break into networks, or you think of trying to access things that maybe you aren't supposed to or don't know how to or something like that. And that involves one of these three types of things. The most basic level of hacking is social engineering. Basically, you're exploiting people to gain access to a system. This is like 99% of day-to-day -day hacking. Almost all of you have done this. This is getting someone's password off a sticky note on their desk is this kind of hacking. Common things like faking credentials or sweet-talking your way to access a system, essentially trying common passwords. This is like if your mom's computer is on and you need to access it and she's not home, you guess her password or you look at her notebook filled with her passwords. That's this type of hacking. There's a quote from Hackers that I really like about this, which I think is really hilarious. If you haven't seen Hackers, the movie, go watch it. It's great. Someone didn't bother reading my carefully prepared memo on commonly used passwords, says the plague. Now then, as I so meticulously pointed out, the four most used passwords are love, sex, secret, and God. So would your holiness care to change her password? I think that's funny. Hackers is great. Now we can, of course, use love, sex, secret, and God because most of those don't satisfy password requirements, which have changed and mostly eliminated a lot of the social engineering that old hackers were able to do. Today, you have to use all sorts of weird characters and special characters, and that's a way to counteract this type of hacking. So that's when you move to the next type of hacking, which is cracking. It's usually called brute force attempts, but you might picture a guy trying to like force a door down. That's not really what it is. It's more like typing random numbers into a keypad until you get the right one. Or kind of picking a lock, I guess. The hacker guesses passwords and credentials needed to access a system, usually using special software. This is how people get AOL, Twitter, Gmail accounts, and they get hacked and they get them stolen. These software programs can try a million passwords and different combinations of characters using information that they can get from you publicly and also just trying them at random until they get the right one and then boom, they're in. Which is why you shouldn't make your password something that they would consider normal or weak password, something like your birthday or your first name or you know where you're from combined with your birth year and all of those things. Those things are right at the top of that software. So they're the first things they're gonna try. They have to let their computer work at it for a while. So when you think brute force, don't think of him sitting there typing furiously trying to try all these passwords. This is a software program that someone can run and eventually they will get in. They're not muscling their way in, but the software sort of is. But if that doesn't work, then hackers use the third method, which is exploiting. This is discovering or creating a vulnerability in a whole system and then using that to gain access to information. So instead of trying to log into Gmail or Facebook through your username and password, they try and find a vulnerability in Facebook's wall as a whole and then get to your information that way. Usually this involves malware. Could also involve credit card skimming. This is a simple way to do it where they put a little device inside of an ATM to scan the credit cards as they get there. That's an exploitation. But more commonly, you're going to see something like malware when you go to a website and that installs a little piece of software that allows the hacker to bypass your security and access your computer whenever they want. DDoSing is a type of exploitation. I'm not going to explain entirely what that is, but it's called a denial of service attack. Anonymous uses this a lot. This is where Anonymous might take thousands of computers infected with malware 
and make them point their web browsers at the same website to attack that system from thousands of IP addresses or millions all at the same time and take the website down. It's like overwhelming the website with a mass of zombies. Literally, that's what you can picture because that's kind of how it works. Obviously, this type of hacking gets technical really fast. They can use a variety of different attacks that may exist even in the code that the website's written in, like in PHP or SQL and other protocols to access these websites. And it's also how jailbreaking happens. They're looking at different ports and trying to find a way into the software. It's very complicated stuff. But if you're combining all of this to make a living wage or major social and economic change, and you call yourself a hacker, you're probably a white hat hacker. But otherwise, you're probably a black hat hacker, and you're never going to call yourself a hacker. Most black hat hackers are just like, oh, you know, I was playing with this thing and ended up in the FBI database. No big deal. Hacker history started way back with phones. Hack first came to mean fussing with machines in general. And at MIT in April of 1955, for a meeting of the Tech Model Railroad Club, it was stated that Mr. Eccles requests that anyone working or hacking on the electrical systems turn off the power to avoid a fuse blowing. Hacking didn't just have to do with computers, and it's been used that way ever since. In the 1950s, a blind seven-year-old, Joe Ingressa Jr., heard a high-pitched tone in the background of a phone call and started whistling along with it. This was back when phones were analog, and those number combinations were a way for the phone company's computer to know where you were going. He learned to recognize all of these different tones, pulses, clicks, and beeps that those phone computers used to talk to themselves. Because back then, those sounds told the phone company what you were trying to do. So if he could copy those and manipulate the entire telephone system, he could make free calls or gain access into other things. They called it phone freaking with a PH, and many early computer hackers began as phone freakers, although they didn't all learn to whistle. Some of them just made recordings and then would play them back. Hacking and exploiting has been around as long as someone has thought to gain access to systems that they weren't supposed to access. In 1903, a stage magician, Neville Maskellen, found a security hole in Marconi's wireless telegraph. And during a public demonstration of Marconi's wireless telegraph, the magician sneakily hijacked the signal and sent insulting Morse code messages down the wire instead of the intended messages for the live audience. And this is where, uh, this is where all craziness happens. I mean, that kind of stuff is what hacking is all about. A lot of it isn't malicious, but about jokes and about making themselves laugh and doing it for the lulls. While there are many famous hackers throughout history, even Steve Wozniak hacked into things. There are also places like Anonymous, which is an international gathering of people using their hacking prowess to shed light on global injustice. They directly caused the resignation of a chief executive of a US security firm that was helping the government track down cyber activists. They even got into his email and then they made it public, which showed the firm was willing to use dirty tactics to try and find these people who were just activists online. There's a lot of amazing stuff you can do with the internet. The internet is literally changing how our brains work, which is incredible to think about, which is also kind of funny to think about. Just by having a computer in your house, you are making yourself a different human than we would have been 50 years ago. It's mind blowing. Computers today are shockingly powerful, which brings me to our sponsor, Intel. A lot of you probably have their hardware inside of your computer right now. Having Intel inside makes for better experiences outside. So a big thank you to them for sponsoring this series of Test Tube Plus. This was our last installment on our series about the internet. To watch the rest of those episodes, please click on the links on the screen or down in the description, and please subscribe. We're coming back again real soon with a whole bunch of new Test Tube Plus. So keep on watching. And subscribe so you get all of our videos. I'm Trace. See you tomorrow. Trace.